Hi everyone, and welcome to our Unit 2 screencast. This is an introduction to biological molecules. First, we need to talk about the difference between synthesis and hydrolysis. But before we can do that, we need to know a little bit more about molecules. The most important compound types that you're going to learn types that you're going to learn about are polymers and monomers. Polymers mean many, many, many molecules. This is a molecule. This is a molecule of DNA. This is a molecule of carbohydrates. It is a polymer called cellulose. Polymers mean many molecules strung together. So you can see here we've got a sugar strung together with another sugar, strung together with another sugar, and it would go on for much longer than that. That would create a polymer called cellulose. You can see here the letters of the DNA, A, G, T, A, C, G, etc., etc. Those nucleotides are joined together to make the polymer of DNA. So there are four types of polymers that we're going to talk about this year. Proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, which we already know are fats, and nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are DNA and RNA. And a polymer is made up of a chain of a whole bunch of monomers linked together. Monomer means one. So when you have one sugar or one fat or one nucleotide or one amino acid molecule, you're talking about a monomer. The monomers we're going to learn this year are amino acids. This is a picture of an amino acid. We're going to learn about sugars, which is a type of carb. This is a simple sugar. We're going to learn about fatty acids. This is a fatty acid. And we're going to learn about nucleotides, those letters A, C, T, and G. This one is T. And nucleotides build DNA and RNA. So monomers are made up of one molecule. And when you put a whole bunch of monomers together via dehydration synthesis, which we'll talk about shortly, you would make a polymer. And if you take a polymer and cut it apart, then you would be back to monomers again. The large polymers are also called macromolecules. Macro meaning big, big molecule. So starch is a big molecule, and you can see that it's made up of a whole bunch of sugars linked together. DNA is a macromolecule made up of a whole bunch of nucleotides linked together. Macromolecules are formed by joining monomers together. And whenever you join two molecules together, in order for them to fit together, they have to lose a water. And because they lose a water, we call it dehydration. If they get dehydrated, they're losing water. Synthesis. Synthesis because whenever you grow them something, that's called synthesizing something. So dehydration synthesis is if you take two monomers and another one, you join them together. In order to fit these two molecules together, they won't fit unless you remove that H from one of them and the OH from the other. HOH, we know, is water. We have the water, and now these two molecules are stuck together. A chain of a monomer called a polymer. Hydrolysis is the opposite of dehydration synthesis. If you break a polymer apart, then you have to add water. That's called hydrolysis. And basically, you just have to give the water back to these molecules so they can separate to each other. This one will grab an OH. This one will grab an H. And I think of it like a fire hose. You picture some firefighters standing in front of a line of people that were all holding hands, and the firefighter shot water at those people. The people would break apart from each other. So when you add water to a polymer, it will break apart to form monomers. So first we'll watch these monomers join together with dehydration synthesis. So 
So they're coming together. To fit, they have to lose a water. There's another one coming together, and another water is lost. And now you've got three molecules stuck together, and that's formed a polymer. To do the opposite of that, we would do hydrolysis. So we would add the water, give the water back to those molecules so they can separate from each other. So here's water. We gave one water back. And we separated, and we gave another water back, and now you're left with monomers again. So the polymer was chopped up by hydrolysis back into monomers. The monomers that we're going to be learning about this year, again, the building blocks of these molecules are simple sugars like glucose, fatty acids, glycerol, Amino acids, nucleotides, those are our letters A, C, T, and G. When you put sugars together, you make a poly, again, that means many. Saccharide, saccharide, whenever you see someone, something that says saccharide or you tell someone that they're very saccharin, you mean really sugary sweet. So polysaccharide means many sugars joined together. Fatty acids and glycerol will join up to make fats, lipids, like phospholipids and cell membranes that we were learning about. Amino acids join together to make proteins, and nucleotides, A, C, T, and G, join together to make nucleic acids, which are DNA and RNA. In the next screencast, we're going to be learning all about these four types of molecules. And let's start by looking at the polymer of carbohydrate. If you take a carbohydrate and it undergoes hydrolysis, we add water, you chop the polymer, carbohydrate, into simple sugars, like glucose or fructose or lactose. And when you do the opposite and take simple sugars and put them back together, probably in a different way, it would undergo dehydration synthesis, steal some water from the simple sugars, and they would form carbohydrates. So this is something that would very commonly happen around mealtime. You're eating a carrot, and a carrot goes into your digestive system, a lot of water. The water and the enzymes in your digestive system will chop apart that the carbs in that carrot, and you will end up with simple sugars. Your body will then absorb those simple sugars, and when those simple sugars get into your cells, the cells will put them together in polymers of carbs, and it needs to do work in the body. The next, the next polymer we'll talk about are protein. So, if you take proteins and you add water in your digestive system, those proteins can be ripped apart into amino acids. Ultimately, your body can then use those amino acids put them together in the water during the process to make the proteins that your body needs to survive. So you eat a steak from a cow, and then your body takes all of those amino acids from that steak and puts them together to make hemoglobin, a protein that you need in your body. Or maybe it's going to make an enzyme that you need in your digestive system. The next type of polymer we'll the next type of polymer we'll talk about are fats. Fats are lipids. Again, if you take a fat or a lipid and you add water to it, it will get broken apart into two types of molecules, fatty acids and glycerol. And again, your body can then take those fatty acids and glycerol and build the fats that it needs, like hormones or steroids or phospholipids for your cell membrane. And it will do that with dehydration synthesis. And lastly, if you take DNA and RNA, if you're eating any living thing, it has DNA and RNA. You digest it, you add water, you chop it apart with hydrolysis, and in doing that, you make nucleotides, A, C, P, and G, and then your body will absorb those nucleotides and put them back together. If it's, say, making a new cell and it needs to copy its DNA, or maybe it's making a messenger RNA, so it can send a message out to the ribosome and tell the ribosome what protein to make. So the nucleotides, all of those reactions including hydrolysis and dehydration synthesis, need three things. Of course, they need energy, and that's 
ATP energy, made it the mitochondria. They need water, especially for doing hydrolysis. And they need enzymes. Enzymes make all of these reactions happen more quickly in your body. So make sure you come to class with all your hot questions about the beginning information you need for biological molecules.